What's be two capital G here? This is the 2017 Yu-Gi-Oh World Championship Dragon Duel Finals. If you guys are wondering, because maybe you don't play Yu-Gi-Oh, what Dragon Duel stands for? It's for players who are 13 and under. People like to think of it as basically the junior division for Yu-Gi-Oh competitive play. Looks like we've got Chain Burn that is being played by uh, Ryan Yu, and we've got Rafael Rick. If I mispronounce his name, I apologize. He's from Brazil. So Brazil versus Canada and my understanding of his deck is it's just kind of all over the place uh, Raphael's deck. He has some invoked in there. He has some kaiju cards uh, I believe he might even be playing true Dracos as well. So it's just kind of a, a combination of everything and You'd have to imagine that Chainburn has a decisive advantage, so he's going to just uh, shotgun basically the Cosmic Cyclone uh, at Ryan Views, uh, use set 5. Now, I don't know about this because generally Chainburn, everything is chainable. Obviously, you know, the first name comes into play there. He's going to activate Threatening Roar, so that's going to shut down the battle phase. Um... I don't know that that act that Raphael just did is it's commonly known as blind MS Ting and it's kind of just throwing a card out there when you don't know what you're going to hit just wanting to get uh, rid of one of the cards in your opponent's back row so you have less threats to deal with but against chain burn you don't generally want to do that because it can start this massive chain reaction your opponent can get the like chain link five they can activate chain burn or excuse me uh, chain strike and you can take a mess of damage in addition to that not only will he not have access to the battle phase this turn, but paying a thousand life points is pretty significant. Considering he got no value out of the card, that threatening roar would have been used as a neg one by um, Ryan Yu at some point. Now it looks like he's activating Book of Moon on his own Alistair. He searched from a uh, magical meltdown, then he got invocation from the Alistair. Now he's playing Book of Moon. The only legal target on the field is his Alistair, so he has to target that. And I wonder if maybe he's just trying to get down, like he's trying to get his card uh, count down, because obviously against Chainburn, you don't want to commit many cards to the field. Things like Secret Barrel or Just Desserts, Secret Blast, they'll just wipe you out. Well, Secret Barrel honestly doesn't care whether you have the cards on the field or in the hand, but... You know, cards like Secret Blast and Just Desserts do. So I believe that he's just trying to get his card count down. The interesting thing is, <clears throat> he could have possibly used that spell for something like Merkaba if he chooses to summon that. Now he's going to activate Invocation, so he must be wanting to summon one of his invoked monsters using Alistair the Invoker. And I believe that was a Thunder Strike Kaiju. Okay, he's going into Merkaba. Uh, Alistar gets banished, of course, and at any point, he can activate that invocation from the graveyard. He chooses not to, and I believe he just passed his turn. Looks like they're going to thoroughly shuffle the deck. You guys noticed that uh, both players are playing with the same card sleeves. I'm not a big fan of that, but I understand at this event why they do it. <clears throat> They want to make sure, obviously, there's nothing funny going on with anybody's card sleeves. That's why Konami provides the card sleeves for the players. Let me make sure this is in the highest definition. I believe that it is. 720? No, let's turn that up a little bit. There we go. Should look a little better. Anyways, um, yeah, it looks like they're just going to do a thorough shuffle. Now, one of the ways to actually kind of outsmart Chain Burn a lot of times is to just leave one monster on the field so that you can't be hit with Lava Golem. Um, also, you reduce the amount of damage that you would take from something like Blazing Mirror Force, which Ryan Yu is actually running. The problem is you actually reduce the amount of damage that you can do on any given turn as well. So while you're playing passive, you actually limit yourself when it comes to offense. And the more time that you give Chain Burn, like uh, eventually it is going to get one of those massive chains that does a bunch of damage to you. It's just a matter of time. You cannot give Burn decks time to set up. Now, obviously... <clears throat> Ryan, you got to go first. He set five cards in his back row, so there's nothing you can really do about that when the opponent goes first. Looks like he's going to set a monster. Now, I've been hearing that he's been playing a tech copy of Dice Jar, which I would love to see because <laughs> that card is nuts. And actually, if uh, he was lucky enough to roll a six, I believe Dice Jar can do 6,000 damage. He'd almost kill Raphael if he was lucky enough to do a six. It it's a really crazy card. I have not seen Dice Jar played competitively. I I'm not sure ever, e even, even if so. It had to be in like the GX era. And he's going to flip over that Dice Jar. Holy moly. That is the Look at the smile on his. His face he is laughing he's like 
this guy is not prepared. And you can see he already has the dice in his hand or the die in his hand. This guy must, uh, he has a lot of experience with dice jar. Now, keep in mind that dice jar is not guaranteed to activate. Obviously, Merkaba can negate it by pitching a monster, which makes it a little weird that he didn't. He's he's actually handing Raphael the die, but Raphael's saying, no, 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 no. There's no way I'm letting you use dice jar. I'm going to go ahead and negate um Merkaba can negate activations, which means it can be used during the damage step. He's going to pass him that dice jar back, and he's going to pitch some monster. And he should have all types of dead monsters. He used the Kaiju for his first summon of Merkaba. Looks like he is going to pitch a monster. Dice jar is going to get banished. Okay, so won't have any dice jar action. I think that's the right play. Looks like he's going to pass to Ryan Yu. And Ryan Yu says, I'm just going to set one and pass it back to you, brother. I think there's just going to be so many dead cards for Raphael. Uh, even the cards that should be useful, like Cosmic Cyclone, that get rid of back row, everything's chainable, it costs you life points. They're, they're just not ideal cards for Chain Burn. If you don't know much about Yu-Gi-Oh! Chain Burn, the deck that uh, Ryan Yu is playing, it's one of the most divisive decks in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Players who play Chain Burn love it, and people who play against it loathe it. So it's a really, really uh, annoying deck, but it can be just so effective because it has this, this unpredictability factor where people just don't see it coming and they're not prepared for it and it wrecks them looks like he declared an attack secret barrel is going to be activated now if uh rafael has any traps in his hand he can negate secret barrel as as well but if he does do that Merkaba is a once per turn so the other four traps will completely become online and he will not be able to respond at all and actually i think he just pitched the monster that could be maxi he might be wanting to actually just reduce the amount of damage that he would take because secret barrel obviously counts the uh the cards in your hand as well as on the field and looks like they're both going to calculate life points so yeah it looks like the secret barrel didn't get banished it's gonna resolve and uh ryan's gonna take the the attack directly and rafael's going to take the burn damage from secret barrel i think that trade is it's pretty even. Obviously, you would say that uh, Ryan took more damage, but Chain Burn doesn't really play you straight up. So it plays almost a different, it plays a completely different type of way. Chain Burn is, is perfectly happy taking three or four direct attacks. As long as it doesn't take that last bit of lethal damage, it honestly doesn't care if it's at, you know, one life point. It's irrelevant. It doesn't have any cards that require cost or anything like that. He's going to, once again, try to go to battle phase, and Wabaku's going to be chained. Uh, that, obviously, is going to block any battle damage. So his damage will be zero, and he's basically just... Whatever card he draws, he immediately sets. He's keeping his back row uh, set with five. One of the biggest ways to blow out Chain Burn is to end phase Twin Twister with them, but I'm not sure Raphael's even playing Twin Twister, to be honest. And even if he was, he'd have to draw it, set it, and then he'd have to, you know, shotgun it during the end phase, and that takes a couple of turns. Again, you don't want to give Chain Burn too much time. He is playing this duel very com conservatively. Looks like he's going to attack with Merkaba once again. Now, he has to be careful. I think that Ryan Ryan Yu's at, uh, checking his hand to see what his hand count is. It's going to activate another copy of Secret Barrel. You always have to be careful because of things like Dimension Wall when you randomly attack with very, very big monsters because that attack can basically come back to you. You can take tons of damage from Dimension Wall. And looks like Ryan Yu says, I'm going to go ahead and change Chain Strike. So that looks like change, Chain Link 2. Okay. And... Will Raphael, it looks like he's going to negate that. So he pitches to negate it. That is Chain Link 3, and that, that can be dangerous. He's going to activate Blazing Mirror Force as Chain Link 4. And he says, wait a minute, brother. I got something else for you. Chain, oh, is, is, oh my goodness, a Chain Strike at the end. That is Chain Link 5. That is totally a legal play because when Chain Strike is activated, there is only one copy of uh, Chain Strike on the chain. That is a... That's a, what, 2,000 burn chain strike? That is massive in this duel. And he's going to lose his Merkaba, his only monster on the field. He's also going to take burn damage from the Secret Barrel as well. And um, the Secret Barrel will... Secret Barrel is not going to resolve before the Mirror Force. So he'll actually reduce the amount of damage because his Merkaba won't be on the field. So that is going to lose him a little bit of damage. Both players are going to take damage. Uh, because of the Blazing Mirror Force, but if you're Ryan Yu, you have to feel pretty good about that. The only thing I would say is since he burnt uh, four cards from his back row, he does need to kind of draw into some cards, maybe Pot of Desires, Card of Demise, cards that can kind of refresh his hand. Not not sure if he plays Card Card D, so I don't think he does. Too many Solemn Strikes running around in the format, probably for him to feel comfortable about that. <clears throat> 
Sam Strike, I believe, is at two uh, during the World's Tournament or, yeah, the World Championship. So, looks like they're just going to resolve the chain. And, obviously, a Yu-Gi-Oh! chain is resolved backwards. Everything is going to hit the graveyard. And uh, they just need to calculate Raphael's life points. I, I assume they're just going to massively drop. Probably at around 2,000, somewhere around that. He's going to take a lot of burn damage. Not enough to kill him, but it's going to be significant to where... He'll have to second guess every attack that he does for the rest of the game because of another, you know, copy of Mirror Force maybe or Dimension Wall, which I'm sure that he, well, I know that he's running. He's running Dimension Wall. Look at that. He went from 6,000 life points to 1,750. That is a huge swing. And Ryan Yu went down to 4,250. But as I said, Chain Burn players generally aren't concerned about their life points as long as they can survive one attack. When you're playing Chain Burn, you don't attack ever. So, you know, Raphael has to constantly be worried. And especially considering he can die by his own attack. Looks like he is going to use that Invocation effect. He's going to um, he's going to add that Alistair to his hand. Invocation is going to go back into his deck. He's going to summon Alistair. And he's going to get that Invocation right back to his hand. The question will be, is he going to Fusion Summon again? <clears throat> and if he does, looks like he, he put it on the field. Yeah, he's, he's, he's going to Fusion Summon again. The question is, what is he going to use? Does he use... Okay, so he's going to use that uh, Kaiju. And I guess he's going for a second copy of Merkaba. Okay, I guess he felt like if the, the game plan wasn't broken, don't fix it. All right, fair enough. He's basically in the same position that he was before the massive chain um, actually resolved. And it was really it was really cool, right? Uh, they showed a clip of Ryan Yu. And he was talking about this match and just worlds in general, the comp, the 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 uh, competition. And he basically said, "I don't have a game plan at all. <laughs> I'm just gonna play my game." And I just thought that that was hilarious. And I was like, "I love this kid. <laughs> That's the way to play Yu-Gi-Oh." He just comes in, he picks a deck, obviously that he feels like a lot of people are not gonna be expecting. That's how Chain Burn has always been historically, except maybe a small period uh, in GX right after Cyber Dark Impact came out. But Chain Burn. Is usually one of those decks sneaks up on the opponent has a huge massive advantage game one because almost nobody runs any cards to counter it in the opening duel and uh, obviously it's a comfort pick i've seen him in the top four this kid plays the deck magnificently and i think he's actually making some waves in the competitive uh the, the, the Yu-Gi-Oh community should i say because i think a lot of people are looking at chain burn and their eyes are being opened by cards like balance of judgment which if that is a balance of judgment set now nah, he that actually won't do much because he needs uh he needs rafael to commit much more cards for that but you know we'll have to see exactly where this goes and he just has the biggest smile on his face he thinks uh, he must think that he's in control of this duel which it appears that he is looks like he's going to activate the effect of invocation again i wonder if that means he's going to summon alistair or maybe he keep, he plans on keeping it in his hand for a possible negate he's gonna summon it all right so he's going in i guess he feels like there's no reason not to. I mean, he's only sitting on 1750 life points. Now, I heard that Rafael only runs five traps, so the odds aren't good of him being able to negate more than like one trap in a door, to be honest, because he just has to draw the traps. And I, I, I wonder what those traps actually are. Maybe they're Solemns. Could they be Dimensional Barriers, which would be completely dead? In fact, all those cards would be dead against Chain Burn in general. I can't think of any trap that he could possibly be main decking that could be good against Chain Burn in the main deck. Torrential, no, Mirror Force. There, there is just no trap card that fits that. Unless he's playing, no, Card Car of the Duelist isn't legal. I was thinking Heavy Dust Storm, but um, that's Code of the Duelist isn't legal for this tournament. So there, there's nothing I can think of that would actually, what's it called? Looks like he did a pile shuffle. See, see how his cards might potentially could could potentially get mixed up with his cards in his back row. That's why I don't really like when the uh, when you use the same sleeves. But it only happens at like YCSs and Worlds and stuff like that. Usually at original, you'd bring your own card sleeves. Plus, I think the judges are are doing final cuts as well. He's putting Merkaba in, in defense position and he's attacking with Alistar. That is, he must be afraid of a mirror force, but. I think I don't think he realizes that significantly reduces his damage. Alistair is only what a thousand damage, something like that. I mean, you're looking at possibly going from maybe a turn or two to going four turns. All right, well I guess he got his thousand damage in. 
he's giving Ryan Yu more time. I think I would have just risked it and put every and attacked with both monsters. Although the dimensional wall, yeah, I guess that is a possibility. If he hits your Alistar with dimension wall, then uh you don't die, but if he hits the Merkaba with it, you are guaranteed to die if it resolves. Alright, so let's see if he's going to go in the battle phase. Yeah, he's swinging again. And uh, Ryan Yu says, I'll take it. I'll take it. Again, Chainburn is completely comfortable taking small attacks. That's how the deck wants to, because essentially what Chainburn is saying right now is, that's fine. I'll take these small attacks. You're giving me two and three more turns that I might not have seen. And if nothing else, you're not pressuring you're not pressuring Ryan to actually use those cards in his back row because some of them might not be great cards. Oh, he rips a pot of desires off the top. Now, will Ash Blossom be chained to negate that? He's going to banish his 10 cards as a cost. Oh, he's going to negate it. He's going to negate it with um, with Merkaba. Fair enough. So he didn't even need the Ash Blossom. And I'm not sure if Ryan... I'm not sure if he thought about that because he ripped that pot of uh, desires really quickly. And that could be really big. He might need to activate some cards now. Maybe he has a Reckless Greed. Oh, Just Desserts is going to be activated. He cannot use Merkabra again. It is a hard once per turn. And he activates Ojama Trio. The first game goes to Ryan Yu. Obviously, Chain resolves backwards. Ojama Trio would resolve first. And the Just Desserts would hit him for 2,500 damage. And that's why I say you cannot give a Chain Burn player time. When you let them accumulate all of those resources, you're just giving them more time. You have to try and pressure them and put them on a clock. You see that he actually had... if you you look at the cards he had he had no way of actually defending himself from an attack he had a balance of judgment that doesn't stop attacks he had no jama trio and he had obviously the just desserts he had no ways of actually stopping attacks so maybe Raphael should have just pressed but i don't know it's it's all up to interpretation and uh you know personal preference on how aggressive you you play and whatnot because the risk was there if he had dimension wall and you attack into that obviously you lose as well with Merkaba. so looks like they're gonna do a bit of shuffling gonna do probably some siding um okay so if you're if you're ryan i don't really think you have to do anything chain burn is a deck that doesn't really adjust for the opponent the opponent adjusts for chain burn the question is did any of the Dragon Duel players, did any of the competitors actually think that they would be running in the Chain Burn? Chain Burn is one of those uh, decks historically that is so far out of sight, out of mind, that 95% of people that you see, you know what, higher than that, 98% of people that you see at competitive events are not going to be siding for this deck. Sometimes the deck can lose to itself because of consistency issues, or sometimes you run into those random cards like Denko Sekka. There's a Time Lord that can basically uh, lock down your, your back row. Maybe there's the random Jinzo chance, but I don't know. I, I think that right now he has a decisive edge going uh, going into this uh, game, game too. Unless, unless something can prove otherwise... Where maybe Raphael has some crazy counter like Roll to Cree or Denko Sekka or something like that. I just don't know that people were really expecting Chain Burn. I think that he might end up winning this world championship because nobody was expecting this deck to show up. So looks like uh, he has a big advantage. And that crowd panning is looking great. Konami really spared no expense. This is much different of an atmosphere than last year. Obviously, this event is being held in Tokyo, Japan. Last year was on American soil. It was Orlando, Florida, if I'm not mistaken. But you see the lights. They've really tried to create this esports vibe. It is much different than last year. Uh, yeah, I mean, Konami definitely went all out. If you guys saw the introductions to the... Uh, to the finalists, it was a uh, it was a show. Definitely, they had the girls come out and they were dancing and everything. So, I would imagine that you don't want Chain Burn to get set up. I would go first. Uh, having that one less card is actually ideal against Chain Burn because card advantage doesn't mean anything against a Chain Burn deck. Also, you could blast him with those end phase twin twisters if he sides those. Obviously, there's the end phase roll decree if he sides that as well. There's the turn one Denko Sekka, which would be just a tremendous advantage if he played that. I don't think that there's any reason why you would ever want to go. Um, I don't think there's any reason why you want to go second against Chain Burn. Unless for some reason there there was some way to like search Denko Sekka and you knew you were going to open with that card or Denko Sekka. But I mean, we don't even know if he's playing the card. So that's just all speculation at this point. The question is, could we see Chain Burn actually win 
the Dragon Duel World Championship. That would be quite amazing. Uh, Ryan Yu is actually one game away from becoming the king of games from 2017. Dragon Duel Champion. Let's see what's going to happen. Looks like they're just about done shuffling. And again, I would bet money that Raphael is going to say, I want first. I want to at least try and get some things established. I just don't think Invoked... I don't think it has a very good chain uh, chain burn match. I think that you don't run enough chain uh, trap cards for Makaba to be consistently good against the deck. Uh, it's a it's a hard one, or it is a once per turn anyway. So it, it's not like you really have that going. Even if you do negate something that you think is going to be important, it's not like they can't chain off of it anyways. You saw that in the first game where he used Merkaba to rack up more chain links for the chain burn to do 2,000 massive damage. So I, I don't know. I, I don't like this matchup at all. I'm trying to think of a, a deck in this uh, tournament that I would maybe pick against Chain. I think maybe Dinosaurs would have a better matchup because they can make Herald of Perfection. Uh, they also have Nine Branches, which is a counter trap that they can play. Those type of cards can just be... They can they can at least get rid of cards in Chain Burn. He doesn't have anything outside of Merkaba that can be that negate. And he doesn't have enough bullets in the chamber for Merkaba to be consistent. They said he only runs five traps. Five traps is not going to be, it's not going to be enough. Now, I guess he could side in more traps, but the traps he have, the traps that he has in his deck are already useless enough. Like the traps that he have, the traps that he has in his deck are completely conditional on him being able to make Merkaba to begin with, which he should be able to do. It's not like uh, Ryan is going to stop him from doing anything. Ryan's play plays are all based around i'm gonna play my game i don't really care what you're doing so looks like they're going in to game two I believe they're passing each other's decks to uh, i think okay actually i believe they're handing them to the judge for a quick final cut they'll probably shake hands and get this thing underway and it's cool that they got the headsets on so no outside interference um i believe that he was uh I'm not sure if if Rafael was speaking Portuguese or if he was speaking uh, Spanish. Oh no, he this he let Chainburn go first. All right, and the uh, Pot of Duality is gonna open up for Ryan Yu. He sees Threatening Roar, Secret Barrel, and another copy of Pot of Duality. Oh yeah, that's always one of my favorite plays is when you duality for a duality. Looks like some of his cards may be upside down. No, no harm, no foul, but. Yeah, it's always one of my favorite things when you uh you duality into a duality. It's like, man, I didn't get anything accomplished there. <laughs> Obviously, Pot of Duality says he will not be able to special summon this turn, but Ryan Yu doesn't special summon at all. I, I don't even think we've seen him run any monsters that want to be summoned. So far, we've only seen Dice Jar. I know for a fact that he plays Bat Jack, but Bat Jack is just going to be a card that gets set anyway. So I haven't really seen anything that he would summon. Even if he was running something that would be summoned, it would just be Card Card D. It would be something you wouldn't special summon at all anyway. So don't let the pressure get to you, kid. You are one victory away from becoming the 2017 Yu-Gi-Oh! Dragon Duel Champion. Raphael definitely has to make up some ground here. Uh... I just can't figure out why he went second. Maybe he has... He must be siding the Time Lord. He must be siding Denko or something that would encourage Ryan to, I guess, overcommit turn one. Because you expect him to just, like, set five cards as he did in the opening turn. And he's already got three and he set four. Now, I wonder what that other card in his hand could be. If it was something like Dice Jar, he would probably set it. Looks like he might... Okay, I was thinking maybe he's going to shotgun something in the standby phase, but no. Usually with Chain Burn, you want your opponent to act first because you want them to put, you want to chain off of them in case you have a chain strike uh, with a lot of variants. You'll see people do the same thing with Accumulated Fortune, but he doesn't run that card. He runs, uh, he runs Balance of Judgment, which actually I think is going to make a lot of people look at Accumulated Fortune and say, maybe we should run Balance of Judgment. So, Looks like Raphael is going to open with terraforming. He did that with his last duel too. Uh, during the last duel, he opted to go for magical meltdown, but now he went for a Dragonic diagram, or excuse me, Dragonic diagram. Maybe he's switching up his um his his win condition. Maybe he's going to kind of sway away from the invoke side and he's going to go more towards the true draco side heck maybe he even sided out all the invoked cards invoked obviously is not a very big engine it's just the invocations and the alistairs so it's not much to really side out 
It's not like he can't just play the true Draco side. He will have access to Masterpiece if he uh, is playing that. If he has it in his deck, he didn't side it out. That could be a card that could be a problem. If he gets a Masterpiece that is immune to trap cards, that could be a problem because then he doesn't have to worry about those Mirror Forces. He, he never has to worry about getting burnt by those Mirror Forces, which obviously he was fearing in the last duel once he saw the blazing mirror force it was like it was always in his head he put the um merkaba in defense mode you can tell that it affected him all right so he's activating pot of desires he's gonna get two more cards at the cost of banishing 10 face down looks like ryan is just counting saying all right you got 10 cards all right so they're just gonna count those up three three and one all right that makes excuse me three 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 one makes ten he's gonna put those two cards to the side those are gonna be added to his hand did he draw another desires off a of desire that would be a uh, really unfortunate i don't like seeing two desires in a duel to begin with but if you draw desires off of a desires it's like one of the worst things that could happen obviously pot of desires is the hard ones per turn no matter how many copies you have you can only activate one he goes not for the diagram he goes for magical meltdown interesting I guess he is still playing the uh, invoked. Well, I, I guess it does make sense. Why search out um, a magical meltdown if you already had it? Might as well search diagram. It is currently limited at the world's championship, so I, I guess that kind of makes sense. Now, will he summon the Alistair? I mean, he has so many cards in his hand. I would imagine you have to summon Alistair here. Probably go for Merkaba. All right, he does summon Alistair. Okay. Looks like Ryan says, hey, you got it, buddy. I don't have any cards. That I don't have anything that negates effects. We're not playing We're not playing any breakthrough skills. Looks like he's going to go for Diagram. I think he's probably going to pop the Alistair because he can obviously banish it. No, he's not. He's going to blow up something in his hand. I guess the Alistair could still serve as a body, though. I thought maybe he'd blow up the Alistair and then try and banish it. There's Masterpiece. All right, the Draco Slaying King. Can he get it on the field? Can he get it on the field by using a trap card? That is the question, though. And he did already commit his normal summon, but he may be playing some of those true Draco spells and traps that allow him to uh, have extra summons. But looks like that's not the route he's going. He's going to go for Invocation. Nothing can be chained to that fusion spell, but Ryan doesn't care. That would be because of... Oh, excuse me. Magical Meltdown is no longer on the field. He got rid of it with Diagram, so I guess that doesn't even matter. Even if it was on the field, uh, Ryan, you wouldn't care. It's not like Chainburn's going to try and do any negation or anything like that. Is he going to summon it in defense mode? Nope. Okay. I thought for a second he might summon Merkaba in defense mode. I'd be like, that doesn't make any sense. The question is, will he activate Invocation's effect? I, I would imagine you probably do. Because if nothing else, you can just pitch it to the graveyard to negate something like a Chain Strike. It didn't really work out in the first duel, but it still was the right play. All right, so they're going to shuffle up, and all right, he passes the deck over to Ryan, who is uh, going to shuffle as well. I'm trying to think of the position here, and it just, it doesn't seem all that different from the first game. Uh, you basically have Ryan Yu sitting behind a wall of cards. We don't know what they are. And you have Raphael kind of having one monster on the field. If he overcommits, he has the pot he has the potential of running into a mirror force, uh, the blazing mirror force, just taking massive amounts of damage and losing all his all of his monsters. He's going to attack. Oh, he hits the dimension wall, and that was the card I was talking about in the first duel. That is, j and looks like he's going to let that resolve. Oh, that is so much damage. That is so much value. My understanding. Is that 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 would is, is that dimension wall would still work against masterpiece unaffected by traps because it affects the player, not the actual monster. So that's really interesting. But uh, dimension wall, twenty five damage straight at Raphael. He's gonna activate that pot of duality that he got from his other pot of duality during the last turn. He could actually pot of duality into another one. Balance of judgment, secret blast, and backjack. I feel like backjack is gonna get negated. You might want to take Secret Blast. I don't. I don't think you want Balance of Judgment. He's gonna take Backjack. I just have a. I have a really high suspicion Backjack's not gonna resolve. I mean, worst case scenario, he could pitch the Masterpiece to negate Backjack. So we already know he has one monster that could just totally take Backjack offline. And Backjack was really pivotal in the top four. So it's not something that you 
want to take lightly. I believe in top four, it got Ryan Yu a copy of uh, Threatening Roar, and he basically used the Threatening Roar immediately to stop the battle phase, and he just kind of won from there. He went with the balance of judgment plays, and those basically just broke the game open. Now, it's interesting because I don't think Balance of Judgment is going to get him much value. For him to use Balance of Judgment here, actually, no, he has three cards on the board. Balance of Judgment could actually work. I, I keep forgetting about Diagram. Yeah, I, I guess I'm just not paying attention. No, excuse me. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the Alistair on the field. It's not on the field. It's just the Merkaba and the Diagram. So he only has two cards. Okay, yeah. The Balance of Judgment's not really going to work out here unless he gets... Uh, unless he gets Raphael to commit a lot more monsters to the board. Most players, when they play Reckless and they summon a lot, that's how Chain Burn basically opens them up. Or you can use Ojama tokens. Those work as well, but doesn't have any as of yet on the field. All right, looks like the players are just talking back and forth. Ryan says, I'm going to set a couple of cards. He has no hand, so the monster has to be the back jack that he just got off duality. And where does Raphael go from here? He needs to find a way to get Masterpiece on the field, just honestly. He's going to activate Diagram. And he pitches Droll and Lockbird. He's going to blow that up. Is Droll and Lockbird really good against Chamber? I, I don't, I mean, I guess it could be okay against like a Reckless Greed combo or something. But I don't know. I, I don't really feel like there's any great opportune times to activate it. So I could completely understand why he'd want to get rid of it. I mean, I guess it can't hurt, but I don't know. I'm not really seeing how drawing Lockbird is that good. Then again, maybe he sided out Maxi, which clearly was dead in the first duel. So it's not like that was going to be any better. The question here is, does, does Backjack actually resolve? I, I don't think it does. I think he negates it. I, I don't think he's, I don't think he's going to allow any monster effects this duel. Oh, he's going to go for Dynamite. Okay. I believe that was True Draco Heritage. He's going to target a face down to pop. Now, will we see some chain action here? Ah, Balance of Judgment. He actually gets it right there. That's pretty big. Balance of Judgment, obviously not chained. It wouldn't really do much. And he puts Merkaba in defense mode, attacks the face down back jack. Let's see if he negates it. He's going to pitch Ash Blossom using uh, Merkaba's effect, I believe. All right, so yeah, Backjack's gonna get banished. You would not be able to Ash Blossom during the damage step. I would leave the Ash Blossoms in because we saw in Duel 1, uh, Pot of Desires be used by, uh, by Ryan, so you gotta keep the Ash Blossoms in. If nothing else, you discard them. I just didn't see any way that Ryan Vu is going to... I don't think he's going to resolve any monster effects this duel. If he's going to win this duel, it's going to be off the back of his traps. I don't see him using any monster effects. Uh, Raphael is going to have dead cards in his hand throughout the entirety of the duel. He's going to pitch any random monster in his hand to make sure that dice jars and back jacks don't resolve. It, it just makes sense. You get your hand count down, and at the same time, you get rid of a, a possible defender and a, a burn card away from Ryan Yu. So I don't see him resolving any monster effects for the rest of this. In fact, during this entire match, even if he wins this duel, going into game three, again, completely up in the air, I don't see any way he'll resolve any monster effects except maybe in the first turn. And I think that Merkaba is going to be the card that Raphael always goes to, so I just don't see him resolving any monster effects in this duel. If he was playing against a pure version of True Dracos, like a Demise version, yeah, he could resolve all the card effects, or all the card effects that he wanted. But I just don't see, because of Merkab, I don't see him doing it in this match. He can pitch Kaijus as well. He probably sided those out, to be honest. Looks like Ryan is just going to set another spell a trap. Again, the only damage has been because of that dimension wall that uh, did 2,500 damage because Merkab attacked into it. And that's pretty much been it. Hasn't been a ton of action. It's been kind of slow. He's going to attack with Dynamites. Now, the interesting thing is, I don't think you'd want to activate Dynamite if Ryan decides to chain something like a Wabaku, because then you're adding more cards on the field, and things like Balance of Judgment, Secret Blast can just hurt you. All right, so it looks like uh, the duel is now tied. Both players have taken 2,500. Dark Hole is going to be chained. I think you got to negate that. If you've got a spell card in your hand, he's not going to negate it. Interesting enough, he's going to let it ride. Okay, you know what? That actually really slows the duel down for Raphael, and that gets the Merkaba off the board. 
Now, maybe he'll want to summon another copy of Merkaba, but that really slows the duel down. All right, so he's going to go for the Invocation Tricks. Ryan's just going to hand him the uh, <laughs> the Alistair. Maybe he tries to set up for another copy of Merkaba. He's probably, he has to be running three. And he says, all right, the Dark Hole is inconsequential. Okay, fair enough. He searches out that same Invocation. And I believe he's probably going to activate it. One of the reasons why Invoked is seeing some play here um, at the World Championship is the fact that um, it is the fact that all of the cards are there, there's nothing hit in the engine. It's one of the only major archetypes that is completely whole. I guess dinosaurs and Yangzines would be the other ones, but that's why the uh, the finals for the uh, the, the, the general uh, championship finals is just a dino uh, Yangzine dino matchup uh, mirror match. So he's gonna go for Alistair search. Question is, does he want to fusion summon? Does he want to slow roll this? He's already been blasted by one copy of Dimension Wall. Or excuse me, yeah, Dimension Wall. So, all right, I believe he used a uh, diagram. I think that is True Draco Succession. Does he have enough cards to activate that? I don't know if he has enough cards to even activate that in this graveyard. I mean, he might want it for the Masterpiece summon. Keep in mind, he does have Masterpiece. Maybe he's trying to set up that Masterpiece play. So far, we really haven't seen much of Masterpiece. He searched it turn one, I believe, and he just really hasn't done much with it since. It's just kind of sat in his hand. Question here for Ryan Yu is, do you want to chain? He says, no, I do not. Alistair is going to get banished, and Merkaba to summon. What's he going for? Maybe he summons another copy of Merkaba? That is the question here. Does he bust out the big guy? I don't think you do. Yeah, he summons another Makaba. He's thinking about the, de the, de the position. And he's going to settle on attack mode. Okay. He thought he definitely thought about defense position there. Okay. He's going to activate Disciples. All right. I wasn't sure if he had enough cards in his grave to use it, but I guess he does. One, two... Three. Okay, I guess the masterpiece got to the graveyard. Fair enough. I didn't. I wasn't sure if he had enough cards to actually activate the uh, succession, but he did. Okay, so he'll get. He'll net himself another draw. You know, I guess it doesn't matter if he gets rid of masterpiece. It's not like he can't just search it again. Anyways, he has the diagram on the board. Nothing's gonna take that thing out. So fair enough. He's gonna get himself a free draw from a uh, true Draco succession. Wasn't sure how valuable that card would be in this matchup, but uh, you know. Any draw could help. Maybe a twin twister, something like that. He's keeping his field count low, but it is now three. If he summons something else, he has to be very careful for maybe a play with like Ojama Trio and Bounce of Judgment where Ryan would just draw like five cards and it would be a complete blowout at this at that point. The duel is moving relatively slow. Not a lot of action, only two attacks basically taken for both players. Brazil versus Canada. And did he attack? Okay, it looks like Secret Barrel is going to be activated. Okay, we got a little bit of action here. And Rafael has to think because adding a chain link, adding a chain link could hurt. Now, he did draw an extra card, which means he's taking more damage. Oh, my. There's the old, there's the old Jama Trio. Is he going to, he is going to chain. Oh, Ring of Destruction. Oh my goodness. Ring of Destruction. And the question here is, does Merkaba have to be face up to resolve its effect? Because if it doesn't, this could be just, oh my good, this could be game. Okay, so the Ojama Trio was negated. Fair enough. Ring of Destruction. I am, I am so excited. I love Ring of Destruction. One of my all-time favorite cards. Both players are going to take damage. 2,500 damage to both players. It's going to speed the duel. Actually, no. Secret Barrel is going to do some damage as well. Raphael is not going to take the better end of this. He rips the card of the Mize. And, and, oh my goodness, Ash Blossom is chained. All right. How is this going to play out? That Ash Blossom definitely hurts. Can he summon Masterpiece? That would be big. Raphael should have lower light points. Secret Barrel should have resolved. He's going to activate Wabaku, but he is now top decking. 
This is this is incredibly bad. One of the problems with chain burn is sometimes you can basically burn yourself out. The fire burns itself out and you don't have any more resources. The card of demise would have refilled his hand completely. He would have had three more cards, but Ash Blossom is definitely putting in work here uh, as essentially it just negated that card of demise. It was a one for one that you will gladly take. And he threw it down triumphantly. He knew that it was amazing. Ryan said, thank goodness I got my card of demise. And Raphael, there we go. They finally fixed the life points. Okay. I, I was thinking, I was like, the life points are not fixed. They're, it's a problem. All right. Now, Ryan Vu, excuse me. Ryan, you definitely needs to find himself another card of demise <laughs> or a pot of desires. He's throwing down a masterpiece. And that thing is unaffected by traps and monsters. He says, pass. What is his top deck? Masterpiece is online. He has more than enough spells and traps. And we're going to game three. Masterpiece obviously targets the back row. It would pop it. And uh, we're going to game three. Can Shane, this is, he turned that one around. Uh, he also plays Magician of Faith. I think I would probably just side out. You know, honestly, I would just side out the, the monster effects. <laughs> You've seen that Merkaba has been the most consistent monster on the board Throughout the entire duel, throughout the entirety of this duel, Merkaba has been on the field pretty much the entire time. It got ringed, it got mirror force, but he kept summoning them. <laughs> so I don't really think that you want any monster effects because he will negate them. If you don't activate any draw cards, he'll pitch Ash Blossoms. He'll pitch anything in his hand that's dead. I think Ash Blossom is huge in this match. Chain Burn, one of the ways that it recovers is it will constantly it'll give up all of its cards to do burn damage and then it will activate things like balance of judgment and card of demise and it will let the deck replenish its hand but if you have ash blossom you can basically negate that and you when they when they've used all of their resources burning you and they haven't killed you they then try to re, they try to replenish themselves basically think of a, a nascar that's been driving very fast but has to go in for a pit stop and when they go in for a pit stop, you basically slash their tires. And you're like, you're not getting any gas and you don't have any tires. And now you're out of fuel and I can just kill you. Because uh, you, you you essentially saw that in the last duel. When Ryan went to replenish his hand with that card of the Mayas and it got shut down, he lost right then and there. If that card of the Mayas resolves, I think he wins the duel. But, uh, you know, Rafael held that, uh, he held that Ash Blossom. And it was in his hand. It had been in his hand for a while because they showed they showed up a, a portion where it was in his hand, and it's interesting because if he's not running three ash blossoms, he's he's definitely going to side uh, some more in, and it's one of those cards that it's only going to be used at an opportune time. Like he's not going to use ash blossom unless unless Ryan uses like either desires or uh, card of demise. Like he's not going to ash blossom a, a pot of duality, so. Either Ryan needs to kind of shotgun two of those cards in one turn, where Ash Blossom is that hard once per turn, or I don't know, he doesn't have any way of stopping Ash Blossom, so I don't know, maybe he needs to burn him out before he hits Ash Blossom or just cross his fingers and hope hopes that he doesn't hit it. Now, I'm not sure who's going first here, if Ryan's going to let him go first or what. All right, there's the handshake, good sportsmanship. I believe that Ryan has a card of the Mayas in his hand, or is that Pot of Desires? Pot of Desires, does he have the Ash Blossom? He does not have the Ash Blossom. That would be one of the cards I was just talking about. Pot of Desires would be one of the cards that you would definitely target. You would definitely target with the Ash Blossom, but um, obviously Raphael did not. He didn't open with it. If he did open with it, you best believe he would have actually activated the uh, Ash Blossom. Now the question is, Ryan Vu, or excuse me, Ryan Yu. I keep saying Vu, I don't know why. I apologize. Ryan Yu, what are you going to do? He sets five back row, passes it to Raphael. Will he make a concern of effort to go for Masterpiece as he did in the last duel? Terraforming, okay, we've seen this before. <laughs> I believe that, I believe his first action in all three duels has been to open with Terraforming. In game one, he searched Magical Meltdown. In game two, he searched Diagram. And game three, he searches Diagram once again. All right, so will he play it and go for Masterpiece as he did in game one? The, th the thing is, I feel like he has to put Trap Protection on Masterpiece. Because if he doesn't, that thing is going to get Ring of Destruction so fast, it's not even, it's going to make his head spin. And it, it is a limited card, so the only way he can put it back in his deck is with Succession. If he doesn't have Succession, it's just dead forever. Well, no, I guess he could use Return. 
Yeah, I, I guess he could bring it back with return. So it's not technically dead forever. He has some ways of getting it back. And he's probably running return and apocalypse are probably the traps that they were talking about. He say, they said that he runs five traps. Maybe it's like three return and two apocalypse or something like that. I'm not sure. All right, so he popped dimensional barrier. Oh, that is one of the traps that he ran. Okay, not sure why he did not side that out, but whoa, is that is that the end of his turn? Is he really not going to summon anything, or is he setting that for a tribute summon maybe? All right, he is setting that. That's True Draco Apocalypse, and that would be Ignis Heat. Okay, so he summons Ignis Heat. Now, is that going to attack... He's going to go again with the Blind Cosmic Cyclone. I don't agree with that. When your opponent has five cards, you know something chainable is back there. This is going to be a heck of a chain. He has nothing to stop this. Just Desserts is going to be Chain Link 2. He has to pay the cost of 1,000. Chain Link 2, Just Desserts. We know he doesn't have an Ash Blossom. Otherwise, he would have already used it. Chain Link 3 is going to be Secret Barrel, which counts cards on the field, so it will count... Cosmic like, oh my goodness, there's the Ojama Trio. That is so much damage. Chains resolve backwards. Ojama Trio is going to resolve first. That, uh, that can be a crippling off of that chain alone. First off, he will get no value out of his Galaxy Cyclone. He's basically taking 1,000 damage for nothing. And in addition to that, he has a massive chain. The Ojama Trio is going to put three tokens on the field. That obviously cannot be tributed, and when they are destroyed, he'll take damage. So if you, even if he blew them up with Diagram, he would actually take even more damage. So Ojama Trio will resolve first. He'll get three tokens. Then uh, I believe it was just Desserts that will resolve. He'll have four monsters on the field. That'll be 2,000 damage. And then Secret Barrel will resolve, and we'll have to count how many cards he has in his hand and or on the field, which uh, he'll have, uh, what, two three tokens what six on the field he'll have a lot of cards on the field he'll, he'll take 1200 just from the field alone i don't know what else is in his hand but i do not agree with shotgunning that uh shotgunning the the cosmic cyclones he did that in the first duel and it didn't work out and he went back to the well again and it doesn't look like it's going to work out here now maybe he wants to chain ignis heat onto one of this uh maybe onto the old Jama Trio, but no, they're resolving the chain, so he, he he's already missed that opportunity. Plus, you wouldn't want to do that anyways. He would actually take more burn damage by using... If he used Ignis Heat, he would end up taking more burn damage because of Secret Barrel, so that would be stupid. All right, looks like they're going to resolve the chain, and man, he's going to believe me. It says 5,200. I think it's going to be... Uh, that, might, that might be right. No, I was going to say, it's going to be more than that. He's at 3,200, so... He took 4,800 damage from that chain, and he now has three tokens on the field that aren't doing much. All right, so he's going to activate True Draco Succession. Okay, I, I see one card. That is the Apocalypse. No, excuse me. That's not Succession. I think that's Heritage. Yeah, I think that's Heritage. So he's just trying to draw cards according to the um, uh, the number of True Draco and True King cards that went to the graveyard. Yeah, that's uh, I believe that's Heritage. That's not Succession. All right, so they're going to do a quick shuffle. Then he will draw a card. Now, the question is, what does Ryan, you have set? He still has two face-down cards. Uh, and you know what? I think he has a hand, too. I think he has one card in his hand. That's the scary part. Usually with Chain Burn, you expect the player to have no hand. You know, I feel, I feel, like, I feel like the Dueling Gods are going to give him something really magnificent. I, I don't know why. I just feel it in my bones. I feel like, yeah, he, he can he, you can see that he has a hand. I, I feel like he's going to get a pot of duality into, like, a card of demise or something crazy. Or he's going to top deck card of demise just straight up. Looks like he has threatening roar set. <laughs> you can tell the kid is feeling confident. You can tell by that look on his face. I think if he wins, he's going to flip out. I think Raphael is going to be released because he's be like, this is the worst matchup I could have ever imagined. He has a lot of work, and unfortunately, because of that last chain, his margin for error is it, it, it's extremely thin. We already know that he has a threatening roar, so at least one battle phase. He'll probably he'll take this attack. This attack is inconsequential. You can take one attack from Ignis Heat. That's irrelevant. So Raphael's going to get that draw. Looks like he might be going for a tribute here. Tributes for Dynamite. He's going to target a card that sets... Reckless greed, okay. Ryan, Ryan, you's getting greedy here. 
two cards for two turns of no drawing. That is interesting. I don't think that Ryan wanted to use that now, but I, I think he has to. You don't you don't use like when your opponent threatens your reckless greed, you have to pretty much use it. Whether you want to at that point or not. He had to kind of he had to kind of use it there. Now the interesting thing is Raphael's field is clogged. He can't do much with those tokens. He can pop them with diagram, but he'll, he'll take damage because of that. And I don't think he wants to do that. It, it just wouldn't be worth it. Even though that damage is only 300, it's just any little amount is... You, you don't want to take damage if you can avoid it. Tribute something else. F find some other ways. So he's going to draw two cards. One, two. They put the die on top of his deck to signify that he cannot draw for his next two draw phases. Threatening Roar will be used. I think I've actually would have taken that attack, but I guess he feels like he doesn't want to take it. He knows he's safe for at least this turn. All right, they're going to go to one. So he skips the draw phase. All right, that's the Time Lord. Which Time Lord is that? I don't recognize that one. <laughs> he has the biggest smile on his face. Oh man, so he summons a time. Interesting enough, I thought the time I thought Time Lords would be sided in against him. Alright. And will he attack? Will he not attack? Card of Demise! That's why he threw down the time. Oh my goodness. Did I call that or did I not call that? I said that the Yu-Gi-Oh gods are going to give this card a card of demise. I feel it in my bones. Does he have the Ash Blossom? If he does not, he's in so much pro Oh, he discards Max C before it resolves to make sure that he has three cards or to make sure he has zero cards in his hand. And he gets Pot of Duality on top of that. This kid is ripping everything. He sees a pot of desires. A secret blast is going to do so much burn damage. He controls six cards on the board. That would be, what, 1,800 damage? He's going to take that secret blast. No, he doesn't take the secret blast. Interesting. I believe he put secret blast back in his deck. Secret blast could almost do enough damage there to give him the victory, but not quite enough. Oh, this is, this is really, really getting dangerous. And Ryan only has to he only has to skip one more draw phase. He just has to live through another turn. I just wonder if Raphael can. If he gave up Secret Blast, you know he must have some other powerful bullets in his hand. He must have a lot of ammunition. Otherwise, why would you give up the burn damage that you have from Secret Blast? Because that's what he's looking for right now. Right now, he's just looking for burn cards. He doesn't need to draw. He's going to go for Power of Desires. And this is the difference between a duel where you can basically... Stop those draw cards from a player of uh, a chain burn player and a duel where you can't. You see, in this duel, Ryan is because there are no ash blossoms, Ryan is getting everything that he wants, and that is the second pot of desires. Ryan is going for the kill shot, he activates dark hole that is so big. He's gonna activate dynamite's effect, I guess. I guess that's why he didn't want to. I wonder if maybe he should have waited. Maybe he should have went for uh, I'm not gonna second guess it. We'll have to just see how this goes. Now the, now, the thing is, if he can't stop that Dark Hole, which I don't see how he would, he will take 900 damage. He is going to get True King's Return, I believe that is. Yeah, True King's Return. That must be off Dynamite. I, I guess that's fine. He can bring back a monster. Maybe set up for a Masterpiece play by tributing a Trap. All right, so he loses all those Scapegoat tokens, and he'll, he'll take some burn damage. It will put him at 2,300 life points. He'll set three cards. He still has to skip his next draw phase. This is still winnable for Raphael. His, just, his, his margin for error keeps getting slimmer and slimmer. All right, so he uses True King. Uh, True King's returns of Fat to go for Dynamite to bring it back from the graveyard successfully. Now, the thing is, Ryan, you looks like he's very low on cards. He has to make sure he still has enough damage to kill him. Keep in mind, when he put back that secret blast, who knows if he banished it or not. So, he has to make sure he still has enough burn cards in his deck to actually get the job done. The question is... Oh, he's going to Kaiju the Time Lord. Interesting. He Kaijus the Time Lord. And I think he just passed. Now, if this duel goes to time, then Ryan Yu will clearly win. Raphael has done no damage. 
at all. So he can't afford to, to have a duel where they go in the time. And it looks like, are they potentially in time? That would be the worst way that, that or that would be the worst case scenario for Rafael is if they go into time. Because he just, I, I don't I don't think he has the damage to get there. Especially if Ryan Yu has like a threatening roar or Wabaku, something that can just stop all damage for a turn. All right, looks like they're asking for, or they're getting a ruling, some type of clarification. I think they might be, they might be in time. Usually when they're in time, they bring out the, uh, the cards to keep track of turns. I believe he used Diagrams of Fat. Got rid of uh, True King's Return. That's going to pop that Kaiju. And maybe he wants to summon the Masterpiece. At least Masterpiece gives him some ways of getting rid of cards. But I still I still wonder if Ryan would have been better served not using the Pot of Desires and just using that Secret Blast for the damage. I mean, 1,800 damage would have been a lot. I mean, he got some damage. Did they not calculate the damage for... I feel like they didn't calculate the damage for the Ojama Trio. Maybe it's when you're... Maybe it's only when your opponent destroys them? I'm pretty sure it's not. Yeah, I feel like they didn't calculate the damage from the Ojama Trio tokens. That may have been a misstep on Konami and their uh, life point calculations. We'll see if it ultimately matters. If Rafael wins because of it, that would be a shame, but... I believe the Dark Hole destroying the token should have taken uh, 900 life points from Raphael. Mis mistakes happen, I guess. He's going to go for Alistair. I also think that Ryan Yu probably needs to make a play before he allows him to go to Merkaba. <laughs> because Merkaba is not a card you kind of want to see. Uh, Ryan, Ryan is just looking for burn cards. I, I would not. I honestly would not have given up my uh, Secret Blast for the Dark Hole play. I felt like Raphael was locked down. He couldn't really do anything. Secret Blast would have done a, a trillion amount of damage, and you would have been one burn card away from winning and becoming the Dragon Duelist champion. But, again, maybe he knows something that I don't because he's here and I'm not. So He is going to go for Invocation. and uh, The game plan has to be to summon Rakaba again. Raphael's probably sitting on a bunch of dead cards in his hand, like Kaijus and stuff. He's, he's going to get rid of Masterpiece, which means, yes, he is going for Merkaba. We also haven't really seen any chain strike plays, I don't think. Now, the Reckless Greed is far gone, so... Ryan Yu can draw. I, I wonder... See, I don't know. I, I, wonder if, I wonder if Ryan Yu banished all his burn cards. That would be really bad. And he put both cards in attack mode. He's trying to end this game. If I'm if I'm Raphael, I think I might be smelling blood here because Ryan, I mean Ryan, you activated two desires. I think he may have banished all his burn cards. I don't think that second desires really helped them as much as one would imagine. I think he drew a dark hole off of it, which wasn't all that good. All right, looks like both attacks are going through, and Ryan, you had better figure it out because he has about one turn before he dies. And you'd imagine Merkaba's going to negate something. This would be an excellent time for Lava Golem, by the way, too. I don't think he plays it, but still, it just, you know, it's throwing out some theory, yo. Is he going to do something here, maybe? Is he going to activate something? He's looking. He's going to activate Secret Barrel. Okay. Mm -hmm. This appears to be possibly in response to one of the attacks. No. Okay, so, yeah, this is during the battle phase. I guess Secret Barrel's going to go back face down. I thought he was activating Secret Barrel. Drops Ryan Yu to 1,700 life points. He's got to create something. He has some damage. We know that he has a Secret Barrel. Unfortunately, his opponent does, too. He's shaking his head. I don't think he likes his position. I don't think he likes his position at all. This next card could definitely decide it all. Will he go to draw phase? Will he activate those cards in main phase two or during the end phase? What exactly is going to happen here? He's going to activate that secret barrel. This appears to be main phase two. Now, keep in mind, he has to give Raphael an opportunity to potentially respond. 
and Raphael could negate that with using any trap card in his hand, but he only gets to negate one card. Yusto has two cards face down. He's going to activate Chain Strike as Chain Link 2. He's going to read chain, uh, chain Strike. It's 400 per Chain Link, so right now it would be doing 800 damage. That cannot be adjusted. Once the card is activated, it is basically attached to that Chain Link. Looks like he's going to calculate his life points and figure out how much would I have if I don't negate. And he is thinking, oh, it looks like he does not have a way to stop the cards. And unfortunately, that is the end. Ryan Yu wins the Dragon Duel Finals, and he is shocked. Wow, what an amazing match.